Steve. Steve? Yeah. Uh, oh. So can you tell us a little bit about Dan Parada, Parada training? Uh, we can. So Dan's been uh, training dogs since you were, what, eight? Well, Seven? Ten, I think, was the first. First ten, time, yeah. right? Tricks, though, only tricks. So he's been training dogs since he was a little kid. Um, started training uh, bird dogs professionally, I think, the first time when you were 14, 15, really young? 16, yeah. You were, okay, so I'm going to get it a little <laughs> bit off, but that's okay. Uh, and he's always trained dogs. Um, my career path was very, very different. Um, but about 15 years ago, he started training dogs one-on-one, -on -one, doing a bunch of one-on-one -on -one work, and realized really, really quickly that there were some dogs that needed a little bit more than one-on-one -on -one work. And we have a very different approach to training dogs. Um, San Francisco in the Bay Area seems to have one or two modalities that they focus on. There's a lot of treat training, a biscuit basically, um, or on the other end of that spectrum, uh, there's a small handful of trainers that really focus on pinch collars, prong collars, and shock collars. What we learned really early on is both of those methods can be effective in the short term, but really they're putting, in one level or the other, they're putting band-aids on gashes. Neither method is, has been, you know, especially with some of our, some bigger behavior dogs, um, a long-term solution for some of the training issues that we came up with. And so we realized, and Dan I think realized this when he was a really young man, mostly because he grew up really poor and didn't really have access to buying lots of cookies and treats for dogs, uh, nor did he have the money for shot collars and e-collars and some of those things. And he really learned that what the dogs want more than anything is love and praise. And so our vehicle for delivering positive reinforcement since the day that we opened is a love and praise based method. We try to ignore the bad behavior, lots and lots of love and affection for the good behavior, uh, and we find that to be a much longer lasting solution to training methods. Um, in San Francisco, it seems that if you don't use cookies, I, everyone just considers you punitive. And I think very, very early on, um, ACC uh, in particular started spreading some pretty horrific rumors about us. Um, I've had clients, I had a client once sit down with me and say to me, now I just got off the phone with um, someone from the ACC and the SPCA as well, and they told me that you guys use cattle prods. Now, I, I'm a Jewish girl born in New York. I've never seen a cattle prod. Well, <laughs> pretty powerful. I mean, I just, it just doesn't strike me as, um, as, as anything that would re remotely resemble an efficient training tool. Um, but we've heard all kinds of crazy things over the years. Uh, and to the detriment of a lot of dogs and clients. We've had a lot of dogs come um, into us from both of those facilities that were told that they were utterly untrainable and, and, medicated. and medicated to the point where they were do um, dog zombies. And I think what we've, one of the other things that we've discovered is our method of training takes a lot more time. And most trainers need a fast result so they can get paid. I mean, we'd like to get paid as well, but when we opened this business, we did it from the heart, um, and we did it understanding that every dog and every human, and every dog-human combination on top of that, is really, really different. So you can't have so much hubris as to think that a one-size-fits-all training mechanism is gonna work for every scenario. The one consistency that we have has been using that love and that praise as the reward and it just takes more time. It takes more time to do that with a dog with separation anxiety. Um, some of those dogs with us can take 10, 12 weeks. It's managing their energy is what it is. It really is. It's really how we do everything around here. We manage our energy, our energy and our dog's energy with eye contact, when and how, also with um, voice, timing and tone. Right? Touch. Touch. Um, as well, love and praise. We have lots of policies. You know, one of, one of the rules here is if you're a staff member, if you come in in a crap mood, you don't get to work. Yeah. <laughs> we, we throw you in the puppy pen until you can calm down and, um, and spend some time with some puppies. And if you can't get over your attitude, you gotta go because that energy absolutely affects not just your other teammates, but it really affects the dogs in the business. Not that we get too many pinched up employees. No, we don't. Um, <laughs> but you know, there's, there's, there's been a couple of foundational things to our facility. One is approaching everything with kindness and patience. And we lose money on a lot of clients. We have some pretty damaged dogs that come in. 
Uh, they take a lot of time, and because our program's open-ended, what normally is a four to six week program will easily turn into 10 or 12 weeks. But we decide that as long as a client is doing the work, we will keep working with that client. Uh, we donate our program um, pretty, we, we donate or discount really heavily to vets, teachers, our local police, people from the neighborhood. We have a lot of wealthy clients um, that allows us to help clients that absolutely can't afford us but desperately need the work. We hire the humans that no one else will hire. Um, we have a pretty solid track record of that. We work with several programs in the city, Jobs Now, New Door. We take the kids that were thrown away along with the dogs that were thrown away and we work really hard to, to make it work. So it's really painful for us and we take it deeply personally when we find these, we get these outside attacks. Um, our whole life is in this. This is, this is a family business. When my daughter's not in college, she works here. I've got her best friends running around in the building. Um, well, I was going to say, that's a, uh, sorry for interrupting, it's just that uh, it, because there are no schools for this really, I mean, there you, are. you have to teach all your employees, right? So, so, we, we, so, had, we had an employee that came here that went to the school, the ABC, on, the ABC right? online, and she, we ended up hiring this young gal, and she's like, well, I've graduated, they sent me my treat bag, and, and I've, I've tried everything that they told me to do on that video, I tried it over and over and over, and I've even graduated, and it's just not working, what do I do? And I'm like, well, so first there, throw away the treat bag. <laughs> so there is, there is, there is um, ABC, I think it's the Academy of Behavioral, I forget, An Animal, Animal Behavioral, 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 Behavioral Colleges. Yeah. And it's a three or four day certificate mm -hmm. program. And mm -hmm. I've had- it's a little, I think it's like six or eight thousand or it's something. Expensive, it's expensive, yeah. For it's, it's, you know, it's in the thousands of dollars. And, you know, we get the occasional client that says, are you ABC certified? And we say, no, Dan's been training dogs since before that ABC certification ever existed. Right. Um, and we've got about, he's got about 30 years on, on anyone that has a five or six day certificate program. So if you're looking for somebody that's been very well trained and how to do everything with a cookie, um, we may not be the trainer for you. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are scenarios where cookies are perfectly acceptable. Little tiny puppies, when you're working with them on really basic commands, just like with a little kid, a cookie can be a really great tool. Um, I use cookies. Like when kids have a puppy and they keep saying the puppy's name over and over and over and over without any commands, as it's running down the hallway, after a while the puppy just doesn't know its name. So then I'll break out some treats and I say, now say the puppy's name and they say the puppy's name and I drop a treat and the puppy looks over and now the puppy starts to get its name again. Well, we, <laughs> but we take those cookies away as soon as possible. We don't think owners, our philosophy is that owners shouldn't be beholden to a bag of bacon in your pocket. Um, what happens with treats is the value has to get really, really higher and then your dry cleaning bill gets much, much higher. You can only carry so many greasy snacks in your bag and what are you supposed to do if you're in a situation where you, you need a treat and you don't have one. And I think also for deep behavior issues, just like with humans, yes, leave how do you time a treat for separation anxiety? How do you time a treat for severe aggression or reactivity? Um, I don't know about you, but when I'm in a really frustrated, upset, upset mood, you wanna hand me a cookie? I, it's not gonna go really well. It'll work well. with me. <laughs> <laughs> just, it works with me. I will remember that. Yeah. I, I got to keep more milk and cookies in the fridge. Right. But generally speaking, it's really tough to time these things. And so um, that's where that other modality where a lot of places will go, okay, you know what? We're just going to put the shock collar on this dog. And every time a dog reacts poorly, we're going to shock it. That strikes me as... The same with the pinch collar. It's yeah. an after the fact, right? It is. So it's, it's, so, all, it's tough to time. So everything that we do is all about, let's, let's address the underlying behavior. Let's get that dog confident. Let's make sure that the dog understands his boundaries, understands what's accepted of him, excuse me, expected of him. And we're doing that with as much love and praise at the appropriate times as humanly possible. Our goal is to integrate a dog into a family's life. We have families that come in that have integrated themselves into their dog's life. And a lot, a lot, right? And the emotional support dogs that you, they become emotional support humans for their dogs, right, pretty basically. Much, yeah. um, and then nobody's happy. Um, every you know, every canine that we've worked with wants. You know, we don't we don't subscribe to that alpha crap. That's not really what we say. We do talk a lot about being a good decision maker for your dog because you should be a good decision maker for your dogs. Make terrible decisions. They eat okay. couches. They will eat themselves to death. 
Um, they chase will do pigeons they into chase the street. Pigeons. They will do all kinds of terrible things. And so, we, you know, if if people want to use the phrase "dog parents," which they do a lot, we want to teach you how to be a good dog parent. We want you to not accept the behaviors you wouldn't tolerate from your friends and your children from your dog, right? They I, do. And they do. do. I make the joke all the time. If you went out to a bar with your best friend, and every time somebody walked by, your best friend bit him, or tried to pee on him, or did any other of it antisocial poor behavior, you wouldn't take your best friend out very often, right? So we want to make sure that your dog doesn't do those behaviors. And everything that we do at Dan Prada Training is 100% around that kind of core philosophy. Patience, time, we do everything with kindness. And so that's why when we go back to the ACC and, and the SPCA, I know that this isn't as much your focus, but they're, they're very complicit in each other's behavior. Um, We're here, they're best friends. They're, they're very good friends. And so we, we say best friends. the, the, the two director directors and, are yeah. very, very close friends. Um, so this rumor that started with the ACC has spread to the SPCA and back and forth. And we hear, cra I mean, crazy things. Um, some of the threads that I've, I've gotten from dog walkers, all of this second and third and fourth hand information. And we reach out to these people. I've reached out I'm to the SC ACC. I've reached out to the SPCA. I've reached out to the dog walkers that the SPCA has trained. Come see us. Come on down. We are very transparent. Yeah. In fact, if you like, when we're through with this, if you want to make your, have your camera be mobile, we can walk through the building. We can show you what we do here. We're really proud of it. Not a single one of those folks has ever taken us up on the offer, and I have reached out to the ACC and the SPCA. They've been here one time. Times. Well, one time. Twice, actually. Yes. Twice. But yeah, they... They're more they, than welcome. They refuse, more than welcome. They refuse to come in and see what we do and how we... Because then that they, would take, they'd have to stop lying. They'd have to stop lying. Yeah, they see the truth. But what's, you know, the other part that's incredibly challenging, not just as a business owner, but as a human that owns animals and has a family, we have dogs that we could have helped, that nobody else could have helped, that didn't have to be medicated or destroyed, that the ACC would not either, one, not allow us to help, which is just a, it's Well, I, I don't know if that, I, 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 don't, I don't believe that's their job, is it? They can't tell people where or where they can't get once, their dog trained. Dog, well, once a dog is in their custody, apparently they can. But on the other side of that. Well, on, just like the dog that the kid brought up here that had to go to the sanctuary because I was his ho only hope to fix in the aggressive dog that bit the girl yep. down south. The and they said they couldn't, it. that he couldn't drop. 24 hours was as long as he was allowed to leave it here. So in that 24 hours though, even the kid and the young trainer that came up to Robert, uh, yeah. Robert that escorted him, he's a trainer down in Bakersfield there. He, he was like, man, this dog needs to stay with you. Look, he was already responding to everything that we did with this, him. This is a dog. <laughs> the owner had fed this dog nothing but burritos. Burritos. <laughs> so this dog, the dog was a mess. I mean, the dog was an unsocialized uh, giant mess and he would have been a lot of work. And I had asked, you know, the attorney in charge had asked me and Dan if we would help this dog. They didn't have a lot of money. We agreed to do it for, I think it was like $500. I mean, yeah. this, this time, oh, and, and he couldn't even pay that up front. And but all yes. the burritos I could eat, not the dog. <laughs> Yeah. But we agreed to help this dog, but the ACC wouldn't allow it. Wouldn't release um, it here. And so the dog is up at some ranch with no interaction and no training. It's just going to live its days out on a ranch. But that doesn't solve a problem. But how did it get here for the 24 hours? Because we were the only... So ACC down there, because he was going to... He found me as a trainer. He had to get permission to move the dog out. So he told ACC they were coming up here to me. And then ACC down there called up to this ACC. And this ACC said, no, we're not going to give him permission to bring that dog in here. So I sit on the board of Rocket Dog Rescue when one of our board members is an animal attorney. And she reaches out to us for help. And we help her a lot, as often as we can. And she asked us if we would please help this, this kid and this dog. And we said we, we, we would. Um, but ACC wouldn't allow it. Um, there's been several instances where they wouldn't allow an animal, and I think in most of those instances, the animal has died or been destroyed. 
thank you for explaining that. I didn't know all of that. And I, and I certainly didn't know about your training, the, all the details of your training method. Uh, so you would describe it as purely positive training, positive reinforcement. We, we, we actually refer, without the treats, without we refer the to it as neutral, neutral association. association yeah. um, uh, but we say we we do so our but our vehicle for positive reinforcement is love instead of a cookie. Um, it's what the dog's truly after. It's not the biscuit in the hand. It's the hand that's holding the biscuit but, that the dog wants. I mean, isn't that what we all want though? We we want we want love and praise from our family members way more than we want a cookie, right? That's that's the thing that keeps us bonded to our family, and so that's the thing that we use uh, to amazing results. You know, we've, we've got a pretty loyal, growing client base, and our, su our success rate is incredibly high because we don't give up. And we have had dogs here that were on death's door or so medicated that they were dog zombies, that they were less animated than that stuffed dog in the corner. <laughs> I, I'm not kidding, yeah. right? That within a matter, sometimes as short as four, four to six weeks, other dogs it took a bit longer. Yeah. Um, Baxter there was one, one dog they had over there, what, well, that was a, a, a SPCA. SPCA, I don't know, six months, eight months, and then medicated him. He was here for five weeks with the help of my vet. We weaned him off of his medication. He was in my friendly group off leash, so, getting walked up so on the hill. So. Those, so many of those stories that you've turned around, yeah. and it's hard, you know. So how long have you guys been here? In I this had location? We had a business in the city. So, well, so we had kennels in our home in Pacifica for 10 years, yep. and it very much became a me or the dog scenario. And somehow I ended up giving up my career to come open this with him. Smart. Because I run businesses and he trains dogs, so it's a good. Yeah, it worked out well. <laughs> worked out really well. Um, so we've been here for six years or so now. Yeah, six. Um, and have, have been growing, I think we have, close to 25 staff members that work their butts off. Yeah, the, we, everything we do down here is real world-ish. I'd like to say like we use pool table where we teach how to manage eye contact and body positioning and ping pong table for bringing up energy. So just having, trying to hit a ball across the net changes the whole energy of the room. Maybe. So we'll use that to how teach manage in that part of the energy. And we have a training system we're in the middle of patenting right now that will absolutely re revolutionize. We've developed a way that we can take reactive animals and by slowly um, bringing in a stimuli that would normally create an adverse reaction, we can do that in a way that won't harm the animal or anyone else around them. And um, so we found a way to take operative conditioning in a slow, steady way and apply it to canines. And we've had incredible results with that too. I mean, we really, in everything that we do personally and professionally, we work really hard to really live a do no harm philosophy with what we, with, with everything in our lives, yeah. with our staff, doesn't always work out. I mean, it's just, you know, you, you, you know, we're, I don't know if you see on the walls there, we've been kind of working on our value statement and our mission statement that we're kind of turning into our training manuals. And it is foundational for us to approach every creature, human and canine, that comes in this building with compassion because they all have a story. Whether it is a couple who's never had a dog and drops us off their eight week old puppy and says, here, take this new creature that I love to owners who are at their wit's end with a creature they love that they know that if we can't get it right, that that dog's gonna lose its life. That um, happens a lot. We get a lot of those dogs. Yep, we have clients who have literally emptied their bank accounts, even at a discount, because they want the help. And we take that every dollar seriously. So we don't, so our program, just from a pricing model, we don't charge by the week, we charge by the program. So we tell every client, our, the, the agreement is, if you come in and you're doing your lessons and you're doing the work, we're never gonna charge you more than this flat rate. No other, no other let's say, theoretically, a not particularly sustainable business model, but it's been here because we work really hard to get it done. And um, we get results, right? It's really, again, I can't stress it enough. It's how we teach how to manage your energy and your dog's energy at all times. And, once you understand that, and it's pretty simple, along with the walk is the fastest way, if done right, to teach the dog that you're the decision maker. And once the dog says, okay, you're the decision maker, I got gotcha. you, and you know how to manage your energy around your dog and the dog's energy, the dog's like, okay, 
Cool. I'll be laying down right here like my dog just which did. Is an, which is a fascinating segue into the thing that happened with Hank. That was right. that was 100% a scenario where an owner came in and it hadn't been in for lessons for few weeks, had literally forgotten every bit no, of it. It just management. went out the window. She'd been through. <laughs> no, no, she, I know, but it went out the window that particular day. This is Tank. Right? This yeah, is Tank, yeah. right? This is the one that attacked and, my employee, yeah, Aaron. And, yeah, yeah, he, uh, you know, Aaron, Allison, uh, Changed, we changed the rules of having employees go or clients go back there. But Allison had come walking in for her lesson with Tank and Aaron, and Tank was in his kennel. And she came back and uh, was kind of walking around while Aaron was going to get his gear and stuff. And as she came up to the kennel, Aaron walked up to the kennel and popped the kennel. And Tank came flying out, so excited to see Allison, and started jumping up on her out of control. And Aaron was trying to just slow Tank down by blocking, just standing in front of Allison, which he didn't realize at the time because he was a young employee that he's claiming Allison, even though that's what Tank was doing as well. And so that went on for, you know, do -si -do for 30 seconds or so. And Aaron reached down to grab Tank's collar and he went on a two and a half minute full you blown. Have the video, I've shared Yeah, it with a you. full blown attack, which, uh, you know, Aaron was fighting pretty much for his life there because Tank did not stop. He just, he was relentless on his attack until one of my employees came out and fired a stun gun in the air. That's why we have them all. Yeah, we don't use them on the dogs. Just go, so just the sound of it will stop a dog in attack. And so just the crack stopped him. And that's, well, it's uh, kind of what you talk about with that energy discharge, right? Exactly. So what happens with a stun gun is that energy discharge changes and moves the energy perception. Well, the ions in the air and, change. And the so dog the, knows that. So, that. so a dog suddenly goes, it's, it's, like, it's like clapping your hands really loudly, right? We're, but better. But way better, <laughs> yeah. much more effective. So Ivan came out, cracked the stun gun, that allowed Tank to stop, and then they got a catch pull on him. Ivan is now a police officer. That's yeah. another young employee who was in a transitional stage and yeah. went, ended up yeah. going to pol the police academy. But yeah, um, yeah. we got to, and then got tank under control. And but uh, Allison was panicked. She dialed nine one one and um, then she called animal care. Yeah, animal care control while the attack was going on. She got on the phone and made those phone calls. So yeah, then ACC came down and paramedics and the police. Aaron got bit up pretty good. Yeah, he got bit good. Um, yeah, when I got here, I was on a call out to go to uh, off-site with the clients. And I tend to work my mornings in the home office where it's quiet because I do all the paperwork. Yeah, I got the call. I drove, turned around and started heading back here. When I got in, Aaron was in the ambulance and I walked in and ACC was here with two catch poles on tank, um, in, which made no sense to me um, why they had tank in the kitchen with Allison, who was hyperventilating, two first responders, two ACC, um, and so blood, there was blood there from the, on the ground from Tank bit his tongue. I walked in. And not to mention from Aaron. Yeah, well, Aaron's blood was minute compared to Tank's tongue bite, but yeah, Aaron, Aaron was bleeding pretty good. He wasn't going away in the ambulance. But I asked ACC, why two catch poles? Mine had, when my guys hooked it on, one of the wires frayed so they couldn't get it loose. So they had to get that to cut off, so the ACC had theirs on. And she was pretty much quite rude. But um, Allison, again, was still in panic mode. Yeah, AB ended up, um, we had one of our wonderful clients. We have, a, we have several clients who have become very much part of our team over the years. Right. And Amy has this magical way of always being in the right place at the right time. And she happened to come in to drop off her dog for daycare, intervened, took Allison upstairs, yeah, helped out with walked her through, because the paramedics weren't doing anything to yeah, help her. And ACC had the, her dog on two catch poles right in front, right? And they were all just stiff and not, you know, not interacting with her. But yeah, so then um, that was handled. We had our vet come down and take a look at Tank. And then um, ACC pressed charges on Tank. Not myself, not Aaron who got attacked, not my wife who owns half of the business, not Allison whose dog it was, ACC. So we went down to Vicious Dog Court, um, which was quite the joke. But we got down there and ACC, the gal, I forget the sergeant's name at the time, the red-headed gal, what was her name? She, I think she has an English accent, I don't remember. Yeah. You but, know who I'm talking yeah, about. That's yeah, her. yes, so she was the one that came to the facility and, and fielded the call. She was there with her lieutenant at the ACC hearing and, um, and then they got up, it was, it, it was weird for me because it was the first time I really had interaction with ACC or really had any interaction with 
um, the vicious dog unit of San Francisco with Sherry Hicks. And um, other, other, other than the rumors that we were already hearing <clears throat> about them bad mouthing us, right. so we we had known. Oh, we, yeah, no, we knew they were that, fucking smack. That was going on for a while. Did, so uh, you had a successful business for several years here in the city. When did it? Sorry. I, okay. No, no. Oh, so when, when did this? Did you always have a problem with ACC? Or was, did you we didn't, see when the change? We didn't. ACC we didn't well, even we, know why that. Right. We, like we would just hear from clients yep. that the ACC said this or the SPC said that, and it was it was always like really out of left field. We had no no real idea, other other than you know this we is, could, This is how bad the ACC is. There's, I, I went to a house where there was a shepherd, a German shepherd, that was two, almost two years old. Do we it, want to finish the tank story? Oh, yeah, but yeah, let me, I'll, yes, I'll tell you about ACC here in a second. But yes, let's finish the tank story. So, um, yeah, we went to the court with, um, and the Sadler lady and the lieutenant were there, and Allison got up and spoke for a minute, and then ACC got up and started talking, and everybody kind of looked back at me, and I couldn't understand how ACC of San Francisco and the vicious dog unit of the San Francisco PD mm -hmm. did not communicate. At all. Because we have cameras in every room in this facility and we, um, we film. We film just for incidents like this because it's a great learning tool to see what went wrong, to know what happened. Um, and so she got up there and lied, ball face. I mean, flat out made shit up, which I was like, oh my God, you, you're really lying? Do you not know we sent down the tape of the incident? And she didn't because ACC is so bound on getting Sherry Hicks out of there, which they did because she was legit and didn't let them get away with their antics and held them accountable, probably, which nobody else does. And I'm sure John Denny did too. That's why they probably chased him out as well. But um, yeah, she sat up there and lied. And then when they showed the video, well, she no, still, so Sherry, so she she still questioned, stuck by it. She questioned Sandler and then Sherry Hicks said, so... Are you sure you want to stick to that story? Right. And you've, you've heard the, you've read, you've seen the transcripts from that day. And Sandler was like, absolutely I do. And Sherry asked again, I think she asked again, are you sure you want to stick by that? And then she played the tape and it was not. Not even close. She literally said, she literally said at the beginning, we don't think Tank's aggressive. We don't think Tank has a, a, a mean bone in his body and blamed it on my employee which didn't even, and said, you know, we felt that he was jerking the leash. He didn't even have a leash on him. He didn't have a leash in his pocket. He was just gonna reach down for the collar. So it, it was all such a lie, which was, which amazed me that, uh, I, know. I, I don't even know what to say. I, I was baffled. I was baffled that, that, that she would get up there and just make stuff up and that her captain would allow that, that her lieutenant sitting right next to her would allow that. Like, you are absolutely lying, and aren't you supposed to be a servant of the city and protecting people from, and now you're, you're un untrustworthy now. Now I don't, I don't trust ACC as far as I can throw them. And Did the, you know at the time that, uh, I, I think this is part of what so frustrated John Denny at the time, besides the fact that she obviously was not giving an accurate no description of what the video caught yeah right, right. but did you know at the time it's it, it supposedly their express policy at acc to never investigate a bite in a facility yeah do you know you oh know, at the time yeah. i didn't know that right right at the but time i didn't, I didn't know, know that, know yeah. that. Yeah. now I, i've so known that, that after the fact policy, yes that somehow right. they made an exception for you guys yes well, yeah, they well, sure well, did. And, and, and probably a good reason why she made the exception because the director of acc owns Pet Camp right down the road, which is my competition. That's a full-on conflict of interest. It's also against the ethics code of the city. Yeah, but they don't, they don't stop that. I didn't know that at the time. I didn't know that until John Denny told me that. Right. I, was, I was absolutely flabbergasted, which then suddenly, all, all the years sense. of the SPCA and the ACC saying, you know, and- Talking and the, shit. You know, and, and the truth is, I, I'm a small business. It may be a big operation, but it is not particularly easy to be profitable in the city. I mean, especially I'm a native, so, so but, I've been here longer than most of them. But, I guarantee. But the point it. is, even though I've talked to attorneys, um, and I think at one point my attorneys did send a cease and desist letter to SPCA, 
I don't have the money to sue the SPCA, nor do I want that press, right? We, we've, we've gone back and forth on this. The, I don't the, have a problem going with the press but, for a, against ACC or SPCA. It would cost millions of dollars, and we don't have millions I'm not, of dollars. No, all right, I just, there are other remedies. There, there. Yes, there's a lot yes, of ways to surround it. Of interest, the ethics I did. Well, I we tried. reached out to the ethics commission. They, or, they never. They never got back. Yeah, you know. Sorry, we're both a little heated about this. Yeah, I, I followed all the steps for the ethics commission. I've reached out to the press. Um, now the, they'll, they're following up. Though. They are to a certain extent, but the press there's not enough meat on the bone with political climate and everything else in the world. And here's the thing: there should be because the director right now can't run ACC. Why are we building a $65 million one that you know is going to go over budget and be $100 million? There's $100 million San Francisco could put in, and it sure as shit shouldn't be a dog facility, that they can't even run the crappy one they got now. So it's ridiculous. So there are bones on the, oh, there is meat on the spoon. I mean, the amount, of, you know, the amount of research that I've done, we went to our district supervisor to yeah. have this conversation. She wasn't interested. Um, Malia Cohen could care less. Ethics Commission didn't seem to want to care less. So that really left us in this place of, okay, I don't have a million dollars lying around. Uh, do we have a million dollars lying around somewhere that we don't know about? I'm pretty sure it's under the pillow right there. <laughs> that's, where, that's where I usually hide it, it's right there under the pillow. But, I mean, and it's also this incredible amount of men mental energy. I mean, Dan and I, as is, easily work 60, 70 hours a week. We work until we're exhausted as is the mental bandwidth to fight them, but it's this challenge, right? Do we find the mental balance to fight them or, or do we continue to let them damage us? Because I have no idea what my, what my losses, right. how I can even begin to quantify them because the SPCA, and by the way, I also learned that ACC, SPCA, they're all individually owned subsidiaries. So they're not a part of any major, so San Francisco SPCA is not in any way connected to the main headquarters of the ASPCA in New York. They're not, they're, they're not connected. So there is no one to even govern them. Right. So, and there is no governing on the ACC and ACC here. ACC has had not a single oversight committee, I, th I think in 20 years. Um, and that was one of the things that when I sat down with Malia Cohen, I sat down with a pretty substantial list of questions um, asking about oversight, asking about how they're trained, who trains them on their stun guns and their service weapons, and they have no idea. There's no, there's no real mechanism for how they do their jobs. Well, who sets the standards? Nobody seems to know. Well, I asked for a grand jury investigation. Never happened. So I'm going to interrupt uh, Please. just, uh, just to, uh, because I'm afraid I'm going to forget all this. And we're, very, we're just very heated know, about this. I want you guys to know what I know. Great. So, uh, Ethics Commission, you guys were not the only one. John Denny complained of right. I know he I did. I complained of right. right. I have, you know, I have a, a you know, I have a, a, a complaint number of everything that right. you know, for their complaint. That was two years ago. Yeah, yeah, two years ago. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, so you how do we get somebody anything? to investigate well, the well, ethics well, commission? I, I, you know, because I'm always adding to the, these complaints. Right. I'm saying, well, this, not only this happened, but this happened. Yeah, so, I, I haven't. Yeah, so I get responses, but not... Like, no action. But no action. Yeah. Right, no action. Uh, the other thing you mentioned, uh, part of this particular video that we're going to be doing in the next month or two that this is part of, uh, uh, which addresses primarily the conflict of interest with animal care control, Virginia Donahue, and uh, the broader question of why isn't ACC doing this job, um, also relates to the new facility that you mentioned. Yeah. And this is turning into a blue dog. It's already up to like 76 million right. in the county. Right. Uh, and, how, so, and how is, so I mean, just as an example, I'm a pretty good business owner. I've run, this is not the first company I've run. He's an amazing dog trainer. I don't know if even combined our experience is enough to run a an organization like the ACC. That, that takes some pretty intense background yeah. in um, police investigations. Yeah, all kinds it's, of it's, 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 it's a lot more than running a regular type of a business. So how is it that somebody with no experience running govern, government organizations, just because they run a dog kennel, well, that's one reason why she shouldn't be running that well, is because she ran, course, runs but, a dog kennel. But what I'm saying is I, I don't see how that, that experience on you. its own shouldn't 
be enough of a qualification to run a city agency. Now, if you hire somebody that has experience running a police department or that type of an agency, and you have a consultant that understands how to work with animals, that makes total sense to me. But it's a business, no matter what. But more importantly, even just the business on the opposite of the business side is the way that their officers investigate oh, it's one-sided they don't, investigate. Well, they don't they really that's the the lack of investigation they're no good with people they're really kind of a, a nose in the air uh, 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 right they really don't go out of their way to help out they it, it it baffles me that again just going back to the new facility that they're trying to get built i'm sure virginia donahue's putting her all her marbles in that right but yeah, the, my the amount of money San Francisco is going to pay to have that place built and the good that can be done in this city alone just for what they're building that building out of that's already going over budget I understand is ridiculous that and functions, she's going to run it into the ground. And I understand that it functions where the ACC was a, was a um, beneficiary or a contributor that there was advertisement for Pet Camp. Yeah. That there's been multiple events where somehow Pet Camp receive the benefit of that and those two things do just they don't seem congruent in any way shape or form um that tells you right there you don't know how to run a business well it just seems like <laughs> so so Says what do you do all. when one of your clients ends up being a complainant right i mean there's you don't feel that are you kidding me yeah but she would definitely go around to other people and it, like you know they don't investigate bites on a dog trainer in facilities but, but the they did mine here they do. right and tried to write me up on everything bad that they could because they didn't have anything on me because i don't do stuff bad like most of the people out there but so they had to try to get something for what reason i don't know but after but. the hearing when we were outside dan walked up to sadler and said come see my facility come see what we do yeah and she's all she's all I go, you've never seen me train. You've never seen me interact with a dog. Why don't you come watch? I gave her the gate code. I said, come in anytime. Don't call. Just walk in the back door. Stand around. Watch what we do all day. More than welcome. Any day. She said, well, I think you're heavy handed. I go, well, you wouldn't know that because you've never seen me train. I go, so why don't you come down? She goes, well, I'd have to ask my captain. I go, so well, isn't your job to protect animals from people that are heavy handed? She's like, yeah. I go, so you have to ask your captain to do your job? That doesn't make sense to me. And then she pulled me out because it was going to get worse from there. So don't tell me that you're here to protect the dog from heavy-handed people. Call me heavy-handed and never come down to see if I'm heavy-handed or not. Dan would have been an extraordinary litigator. So you have other examples of ACC interfering with your So business. just recently, um, and, but even if, I, even if I can't prove or quantify a single time they took money out of my pocket for a full-paying client, I can tell you when they when it's cost an animal its life. Yeah. A couple years ago, Christine reached out again. There was another young family, German Shepherd, said, "Please help this family. They can't really afford you." And I guess I said on the board of Rocket Dog Rescue, we do, we do, we help, we, we help when we can, whenever we can. There's always a kennel here for uh, emergency dog, which we get, you know, usually once a month. And somebody really needs help with the dog, and so we'll yep. start start the process of teaching them more Plus methods. So many dogs over the years. And we said, of course, we will help this dog. Christine doesn't call me and ask me for free stuff all the time. So when she does, yes, we will. She called me back two days later and said, I've tried. ACC won't release a dog to you. That dog, a couple days after that, because nobody, everybody, I guess, was afraid of it. So the dog never got out to exercise. So the dog didn't eat. And then the dog got a blockage. And or he then, didn't crap, I think. Yeah, he was, he, he was so constipated that he ended up he, with... He wouldn't um, crap in the kennels that he was in, right? They have, right. The, they have half and half where it can kind of go outside, but it's still small and caged, and then back over. Well, he, didn't, he wouldn't relieve himself, and nobody took him out side of that kennel, and he never went to the bathroom, and he ended up dying. Yeah. And then there's, what do you call it when their stomachs flip? Yeah. Um, horses get that too. Rolled stomach just rolled, there's a, no, there's, it, there's, a, there's a particular, yeah. no, it's blow well, type of thing. Um, I forget that, sorry. It, either way, he, he's, he died. He died. And I didn't know it was ACC's job to tell people where or where they can't have their dogs trained. It's at the point now where- That makes no a, sense, that's if, not your job. If there's a dog at the ACC in San Francisco, Christine won't even call me. Right. They'd rather see the dog get put down, I guess. But for ACC to tell anybody that I'm not able to train their dog, I don't see how they could do that. 
we just, we take on the risk and the liability of being bit and dealing with some incredibly aggressive challenging creatures yeah, if we have the hearts and the willingness to help that animal at a free or no charge at all who are they to de deny that dog that rehabilitation even if somebody wanted to pay for it they're no they're, that's not their but business of course. they're not in the business to say which trainer is approved of or not approved of yeah, your job is to protect the animal come down to my building take a look and see why i do it see the reason why they won't come down here because then they'd have to stop lying it's true. They, they'd come down here and go, well, he doesn't do anything mean, and he's getting results, and we don't understand how he gets results because he's not using a biscuit, right? But I, it, I, think it's, I really think it's a function of almost every training facility. If they don't charge by the week and they don't get a result in a finite amount of time, they have to keep charging, right? And so what they've learned is you can get a very quick response with a cookie, or with the pain mechanism. We talked about this earlier. Both of those things will give you a very fast, non-lasting result, right? And then it wears off. So they have to show results because they've got to get the next client in and they're not as, they're not as willing as we are to lose money. <laughs> Something like that, I guess. So there's another dog that came up from Bakersfield that um, <clears throat> he had busted through the fence and bit the neighbor and he reached out for trainers and there was a young man it's also through christine and christine yeah they said well talk to dan so he was going to have the dog come up here to camp and he was going to make the friday every friday come up four hour drive for this kid for his dog to work on the friday lessons take the dog home with ac acc down there no one's being trained if you had a muzzle no problem um and work on what he's learned and then drop him back off on Monday again, or even stay over the weekend and we'd help him even more expedite we, we, that. We even offered that the kid could stay here. Yeah, put him up in our We have in a, a little, room. little spare room here. And I mean, he was a really nice kid. Didn't have a lot of money, was really, it was just kind of a hard luck situation. He, had, yeah. he, he fed his dog burritos. He had to get <laughs> permission from ACC down there in Bakersfield to move the dog. So they called up to the ACC here to let them know that the dog would be coming up here. As soon as they found out he was coming to me, they said no. ACC said no. So now I put the poor kid and his dog, didn't know what to do. He had to give up his dog. He had to send it up to the sanctuary up north, which, you know, he's been driving. He drove up there as often as he could. He, well, he had well, to give up his dog. Yeah, so basically. but he was still wanted to go up there and see his dog. You know, he, was, he, was a, he understood that he should have socialized it better and he, you know, made some mistakes with his dog, but he sure as shit didn't want to see it put down and was willing to drive round trip from Bakersfield every weekend. Yeah, and Christine was gonna lend him the money to do those drives. I mean, you know, yeah. he was just, he was just a, not even a dumb kid. It's, he was just a nice kid from the country who didn't know much about dogs and ended up not socializing a very large dog. I'm not making any excuses. The dog had no business biting him. It's a horrible thing, truly. But he was willing to do everything right to get his dog back on track. And um, ACC denied him, which is cruel. It's cruel to the well, dog, to the person, it's not their job. And so his dog had to go, he had to relinquish ownership and, yeah. and, and you know. It, here's, another, here's another one that ACC, so years ago I went over to a house uh, and I walked into this house. This was before Virginia Donahue's tenure though, way before. I don't think so. It is, yeah, but no. still. They went through multiple directors, by the way. No, because she was just, she had just came in. But it, anyways, it, 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 yes, she had just came in. I think this is where it all started too. But I went into the house and when I walked in, there was something wrong about the house. It was dark. And as I walked into the front door, um, right away the house was dark and the walls and banisters and stairs were all chewed up. And above me, I could hear a rather large dog with a muffled bark and metal chain on the floor. And the client said, hold on, let me go get the dog. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I need to regroup here for a second. Because it, it was like a scary movie. And the reason why it was dark is because they had sheets up because he had ripped down the blinds. Everything was chewed up, hair all over the place. I said, is that the dog upstairs? She said, it is. What kind of a dog? And I said, what kind of dog? And she's like, a shepherd. I'm like, great. A big shepherd? She's like, yeah. So <laughs> they were told by their vet not to let the dog out until it got its shots. And so they didn't let it out for the first eight months out of the house. Right next to him was a tot park. And the dad was wise enough. He only had a six foot fence, but he built, took a, the 
pre-built picket fence that you buy at Home Depot and put that just in the pace of the dog so he can never leave that fence, that backyard. He couldn't get enough momentum to climb that, get over that fence. So she said, I'll, I'll go get the dog. And I said, okay. So I'd moved away from the front door at the bottom of the stairs and kind of headed back towards the kitchen area. She came down the stairs with the dog in a basket muzzle and on that chain. And as the dog came down the stairs, he turned and looked at me and the look on his face was like, you're dead. And the look on my face was, you're probably right. <laughs> right, because he was coming at me full tilt. And so I just kind of looked over to the sliding glass door and I opened it up and I said, pull him out the sliding glass door, pull him out back. And she just kind of blew by and had to tug him because he was coming to attack me. And right outside, and when she flipped the leash, the leash caught his muzzle, his muzzle came off, he hit the ground and lunged at her as I was pulling her in and shut the sliding glass door and caught him on the nose, which slow, slowed him down, but he was still driving in. Let the door go, he bounced back and went outside. I shut it and I called her up and said, oh my God, this dog is absolutely vicious and I'm not sure what to do. And so we knew not to call, I knew not to call ACC because they're just gonna come out and flip out. And so, um, we had to, we had to actually, I, So this dog, this dog was so vicious. This dog was past, this dog had never had it. I mean, this was, they bought this dog from a breeder that bred protection dogs yeah. and never socialized it. So this dog was genetically programmed to be that dog. Now, in the hands of the right trainer, would have been a magnificent creature. We, I, in the hands of a young immigrant family, yeah, who, was also, who was also pregnant, um, and terrified of dogs, by the yeah. way. Was, so he, this dog was he, was... he ruled the family. He, he, he would jump up and take the roast chicken off, off the, the table. table. And if you went to touch him or try to get the food back, he, he'd he, growl at you. He, I mean, he, they weren't going to put more blinds up because he's just going to rip them down. And they literally, they were scared. Every, the dog ruled everybody in the house but the 12-year-old girl. Because at one point, I guess when he was a puppy, she bit him. He or he, he bit her and she socked it because she was mad and after that he was like okay you're the boss <laughs> i guess but we had to call the dad to get the dog in and he said well what do we do and i said this you can get him to my facility but i think he, he might be a lost cause this particular dog because he was mean and dad's like yeah i'm scared of him. And i, I asked some simple questions i'm like so does your daughter get to bring friends over she's only like 12. and um and they said yeah, but we put him up in that room and lock him up. I said, yeah, but what happens when you let him out? Does he search every nook and cranny? He's like everywhere, under beds, in closets. He goes looking for that person. I go, if somebody ever lets, if your daughter has a friend in here and they walk through and open up a door and he gets out, he'll kill him. And he's like, yeah, we're worried about and that. And the young mother was pregnant and would have... Uh, that, I mean, that could have been a problem too, right there, not having another kid come so in. So we called our vet and we said... How do we get him? We need, knock, we need some tranquilizer. To, to just get him down. And so he was out back. She came in with the help. We tried to put, the vet and I tried to put a catch pole on him. Wouldn't, uh, wouldn't have it. Wasn't, couldn't even get near him with the catch pole. We had dad come down. Dad came down to calm the dog down and manhandle him a little bit and, you know, get a leash on him. Uh, the vet injected him with the tranquilizer. And she said that should knock him out within 15 minutes. 45 minutes later, he was still going. She's like, he should be out cold. So they ended up taking him down to ACC and said, you, we gotta euthanize him because he's gonna kill somebody. And he, he was the meanest dog I've ever seen. And you work with thousands of dogs. Yeah, he was this bad. Is, this is I, I mean, to the point where I couldn't even bring him in here because nobody else would be able to handle him but me. And we've, ta we've worked with vicious dogs. 19 years, you and I have been together? Yeah. This is the first time I've ever heard my husband say, I am scared of this creature. Yeah, this one's bad. He, was, the, he was just, he was bad. <laughs> and it's, it seemed, I mean, you know, we love animals. We love dogs, but we love humans too. And not every animal, it's a shitty thing to say, and there's probably people who disagree with me, but going to, hold on, not every creature is, is, is unfortunately, re, you can't. So they, we brought him down to ACC, and they wanted to euthanize him and told him, he, he's, we're scared of him. He pulls food, he's just, he's mean. He's a hard hitting dog. And he we don't- like 140 think, pounds? Yeah, either. like 130 or something, was, like 125, big something boy. like that. Big dog, he's big. And so um, they asked all the questions and they said, yeah, we don't trust him around anybody really. And dogs and little kids, he'll hurt something bad. We know he will. And so 
um, they asked, have you had any trainers? First time I ever encountered the dog. Guess who they blamed that dog on? They said, my style of training is what caused him. And the, even though the client said, no, no, he just came and started today. He hasn't even trained the dog. This all happened today, first time I saw it. But I've heard on multiple occasions, yeah, well, we heard you turned that shepherd bad from other dog walkers. I'm like, no. So that's the kind of shit ACC plays, right? There's been a couple dogs that are dangerous, dangerous dogs. And I just, because of my operation, I can't take every big hard hitting dog like that in because nobody else can deal with them but me. And it takes time to we get can, that dog we rehabilitated. Can take, we can take one a month or so. Yeah. Um, because only at this point, it's like you and Aaron, like only right. two members. And that means every interaction, right? That's every everything feeding, from every potty. Moving him in and out of his kennels and his crates and knowing that there's a good chance he's going to try and take a shot at the title. He's going to most likely try and bite you at some point because that's what he knows the way, how to get away with. He, yeah. he, they know, I bark, I bite, you back up most of the time. And so was that your first bad experience with ACC? Or yeah, well, yeah. You that, think that's the That's one. where I think it all started, right? And even though the client said, no, no, he's never trained the dog. He just showed up today to try to start helping us. And this is what he recommends. Because, and it's we. And it's we, agonizing we, to make that recommendation. Yeah, I know, I, I, but then you realize and you think to yourself, I don't want to be responsible. For that dog, this dog another this Diane Whipple. Or, or, or kills a child, or, or hell, kills, its, kills the mother and that, and, that, and that brand new baby that's going to be born here in a little bit, yeah, right? Diane Whipple who says it all, it's just, you know. It, so I'm curious, just uh, as a general question, uh, how do you feel about liability when you have a dog? If you have a dog in custody, you're responsible for making it uh, uh, a pet. We take pet. it here, very This is, how, this is how serious I take it. it always becomes this, oh, it this does. is how serious I take it. I was out at Fort Funston with a dog, super aggressive pit mix, and the young gal, and her boyfriend is a dog walker, dropped her off, and I put a head collar on the dog, and we started walking in. A head collar is not a muzzle, by the way. It looks like a bridle, you know? You've seen like a... halter. A, uh, like a... The, it's a halter for a horse. It is. Similar. Oh, not, not a bridle, I mean a halter. Yeah. So this dog was... I realized 100 yards in, this dog's way too much for where we're at right now. And so we started walking out pretty fast to get out the parking lot. And she started to tell me that her boyfriend dropped her off. He won't be back for another hour. I'm like, great, because this we got to go down to the facility. And so um, on the walk out, a guy and his dog, which I didn't see coming up from behind me, spun around and came to pass me. And the dog that I had went over and nipped him and caught him on the ear. And he checked the dog, everything okay? He's like, yeah, everything is okay. And we kept walking. I was at my truck with the young gal, getting ready to load the dog up in the back waiting. And the kid walked by with his dog. I said, he goes, well, he's not okay. He got, he got bit. I go, really? He goes, yeah. I go, okay, how bad? He goes, well, look, it's a good tear on his ear. I guess, well, go out to, I live in Pacifica, my vet's out there. Go to Pacifica Pet Hospital. Tell him I sent you, here's my card. And I'll pop in today and pay the bill. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, the dog's in my care, on my leash. He bit your dog. I'm responsible. So, yeah. And even the young girl was like, wow, can't believe you did that. Because that's, it's, it's under my care. It's my well, responsibility, and period. And, and going back to that shepherd, I felt that if I walked away and left that dog and it did damage, it would have been my responsibility. Because that's what I'm paid to do is make that decision or evaluate that situation. And in that case, that's the wrong dog and, to have in that house. I'd say, what, a couple thousand dogs? I think you've made... You've, you've made that four. suggestion. I don't I think, I don't no, even think. Four, four, there's four been four dogs that I've recommended euthanization for. And out of the four that should have been put down, the, the one we rehomed to a police officer in Vallejo, a Belgian Malinois that's thriving on the sport. He already handles a bite dog. He had a big female Belgian that, Malinois that, that was well trained. Either find, either find this dog the right home or euthanize him because he's going to go to hell in a shelter. And, and we did. They found and that 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 dog Murphy. He's thriving now because he, that dog was aggressive with humans and dogs, but the female Belgian Mal Malinois, being the confident dog that she was, knows how to put that little pup in place. And then the officer that's handling him, he's not worried about getting bite. Herself. Knows how to handle the dog, and so that dog is doing very well. But we have we have layers and layers of protocols. So here at the facility, so probably more protocol. I guarantee you more protocol than ACC has. 
And I'll throw my pamphlet down against theirs it's any really, day of the week. It hasn't been a pamphlet well, it's training. Years. Yeah, so no, it's, we yes. have about a 60 page protocol for training and staff for the way every every detail in this building has a every interaction. procedure. Every And staff members have to go through levels of training to get approved to deal with lit levels of dogs because not only um, not only are the, is the care of these creatures my responsibility, I want to make sure that we have as little if no bites as possible. I'm a health as and little. safety officer. We have a health and safety officer who is the head of health and safety for Burning Man for 17, or risk management for Burning Man for 17 years. That's my risk management um, consultant, very dear friend. We take it incredibly seriously. We have layers upon layers and upon layers of protocols that cover everything. If you're a brand new staff person, you're feeding puppies and cleaning up poop for a while before you make it up the chain enough to handle dogs that have issues. And even then, there's certain dogs that no one gets to handle but Dan and now maybe Aaron. And then there's other times where clients have come in with these aggressive dogs, and if even if we think the dog is redeemable, but we don't think that owner is gonna do the work, we will tell them that we will not take them as a client. There's one, there's one guy, literally, that Dan at one point threw out of the program and told him to go get a damn cat. <laughs> Well, there's another, I did a console not too long ago, yeah, I won't say any names, but did a console and I walked into Natasha's office prior to the console and I heard, sit, 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 whack. And I was like, I walk out, I go, don't hit your dog. He goes, I didn't hit my dog. I go, bullshit. You yelled sit at it four or five times and then you smacked her on the rump. I like, I don't know that sound. Don't hit your dog. He goes, well, that's why I'm here to learn. I said, the price of the camp? Go talk to her and walked out because, and then I ended up kicking him out. My head trainer said, don't raise your hand like that to the dog. Don't do that again. I happened to be walking by going into another lesson and he put it to the dog. I'm like, get the F out of here. He was Take an older him. guy. I'm like, get out. It's bad enough that they go, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. No. So ACC, you're wrong. They're wrong. They're just wrong. No, I can guarantee you have more protocol than ACC. Oh, I know. John Denny speaks about it in one of the videos I posted, but they have no protocol. They have no protocol, yes. and, and I do. I, I mean, I work hard at it. So I, we I would be it. happy to share our <laughs> procedure. We're very proud of our policy and procedure manual, and we're actually now we're now we're building our entire training manuals as well because we're trying to expand our product. I'm happy to share that. We're so. I mean, I've shared my data. I feel you know we're 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 so transparent. It's it it uh, it makes me laugh at ACC. It really does. You can lie all you want, but the proof's in the pudding. Come down, I guarantee you I'm one of the only facilities that lets people back there. You, there's no way to be abusive like they say I am, because every minute on the minute, there's somebody down there training. And when you're abusive, you don't have a business. Well, you know, I'm just not I'm, 25 I'm employees. Laughing. Like we have so like we're we're always creating new policy right. about everything that we do. And so we have health and wellness checks for all the animals. Stub your toe. But we Check typically, you know, we don't typically allow intact males once they're past a certain age. We make very rare exceptions for loyal clients that have show dogs. And we happen to have a client that has a, he's, he's about, I think he's about a year old at this point. So still under, they're, he's, they're gonna breed him. I mean, he's a magnificent uh, Swiss mountain dog, gorgeous creature, looks kind of like a leaner, um, St. Bernard without a lot of the jowly stuff. Bernese. So, um, not Bernese, a Swiss mountain dog. Oh, it's, called Swiss. it's called a Swiss mountain dog. Gorgeous creature. So, uh, Obi boarded with us and uh, he called me yesterday and noticed that he had a scratch on the dog's genitals. And I said, well, Luis, I said, you know, we do wellness checks, but we typically don't check dog balls because we don't have a lot of dog balls here. <laughs> and I had a 45 minute long conversation with a client about it, you know, trying to figure out how we got a scratch on his dog's balls. And we think it was just from scratching on his back paws. So now I have to add a layer yeah, to yeah. our policy and procedure Quick manual about um, can we take a break? Yes, I'm sure we can. can about, we about dog balls. So I have to ask you something. Because I want to can, you, can, he wants to know if we can take a super quick break. Yeah, can I take a break? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes, please. When most dog, dog bikes in San Francisco far and away are by neutered males. Any, any reason that would be that you can pick that? I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily think it has anything to do with testicles or not, truthfully. I mean, more testosterone, more test. I think it's just how dogs are brought up. Truthfully, I think a lot of the reason why dogs are biting today, well, being a native of San Francisco, put it this way, growing up here, there's all kinds of critters in Golden Gate Park, rabbits, snakes, all kinds of stuff. 
peacocks, wild peacocks cruising oh, around. Yeah. yeah. Foxes. They're, but they had everything. Now. now, not so much, just coyotes, right? Because they allowed the coyotes to move in. They wiped out everything. Feral cats first wiped out everything. Um, and then it, it's, I, I think it's just the way we interact with dogs nowadays. I partially blame mostly the biscuit givers, truthfully. It's all you can't, ASPCA, you can't say no to your dog. What do you mean you can't say no to the dog? Well, and we don't say no, we say leave it. Instead, it's much easier. Um, but they, they really don't treat the dog like a dog, and the dog is just going to be a dog, period. And so when you baby the dog constantly, or bent over baby talking the dog constantly, um, constantly praising and loving on the dog, they don't understand that. They don't. It's, it's not how the dog's DNA is. You know, they have to earn everything in the wild, but we don't make them earn anything. It's all about just, oh yes, here, you're, you're my bestest friend ever. And so now what do you see? You hardly ever see off-leash dogs because there aren't very many good ones. You know, um, you see dog after dog after dog walking down the street on a leash, like the extendo leash and the harness, being praised and given cookies and the dog going off the Richter at other dogs and people walking by and the people are just feeding it cookies. I saw two trainers up here on Cortland. The girl was bent down, holding a dog. The other guy walked up with the dog and the dog starts barking and she's like, you're with me, you're with me, you're with me, you're with me. The dog <laughs> never looked at her. She finally, the dog turns around, she stuffs a cookie in his face, you're with me, and then the dog jumps up on her lap and she hugged it. And I'm like, oh my God, well, you're, you, you just rewarded the dog like several times for barking at that dog. But so the, the, it, people it just, do that with their kids. I understand, too. but that, that's, that's different. <laughs> no, it's the same No, it's totally baby. different. It's totally different. <laughs> it, but it, it's just, I think the way that the biscuit giver teaches is, is just so far-fetched. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to, well, perfect, the AC or the SPCA, for example, they used to say to the dog that was aggressive or leash reactive to another dog, say, um, look, here's the treat, look at, look at the treat, don't look at the dog, don't look at the dog. If you walk by and not react to the dog, I'll give you the treat. So they give the dog a treat, well, because it didn't react. Well, that's probably because that was more of a dominant dog, and that dog over there didn't even look at it, and that dog's like, oh, I'm not messing with you, right? But that's a scared dog, and so he's going to react. Now they're doing it different. Now they say, Go ahead and look at that other dog. If you don't react, I'll give you a treat. And it's all about giving the treat. Yeah. I've never ever seen them, ever see them with that biscuit say, all right, don't look at the dog and then walk up their dog to another dog and start introducing the dog. They never get the opportunity to get close enough to the other dog to start introducing them the proper way because they're too far away and trying to bribe the dog for not even looking. The dog's gonna look, and I'll tell you why. Because it's a flight animal. Any sound, any movement, the dog has to look. Because it needs to know, do I run away, or do I fight? Or, what, or do you just make a decision for me? Yeah, just look at me, don't worry about that dog, I'll make the decision, stay right there. Now come over here, now leave that alone. And it's also quite possible that statistic has to do with the fact that most dogs in San Francisco are neutered. True. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's so a lot it's, more. It's, it's, it's a function of, of sheer numbers, yeah. Yeah. right? So it would be interesting to see if that statistic held true, if there were the same amount of neutered versus unneutered. Yeah. If all four types in that study were equal amounts, then the statistics, I think, would be a lot Plus, more valid. Dogs are territorial, you know? And so when you walk down the street with your dog, and you're constantly looking at it, loving on it, talking to it, you're giving it mixed signals. So now the dog owns you, more or less. Every time your dog looks at you, if you're already looking at it, you're putting your dog in charge. So uh, constantly, I give you numerous ways we put our dogs in charge, over and over again. So now my dog thinks it's in charge. It has two options, flight or fight. Well, I can't run away because there's a leash on me. So I'm gonna bark, but you're still talking to me, so I must be doing that right. And, the, well, that guy didn't back up, so maybe I'll growl. Oh, that worked. Well, it didn't work on the next guy, so maybe I'll bite him. Well, that worked, right? It's constantly people just don't know how to interact. And I think it's all the misinformation out there. And there is a ton of it. Everybody's got their own style, granted, but it, people need to get on the same page, which I'm gonna help people out and get them on the same page here real quick. So Make it simple. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you wanted to, to 
talk about or bring to our attention? Anything about ACC or SPCA or something different? Yeah, you know, I try not to bring up the ACC personally because there's such a disappointment. You know, for... Oh, did I move? I might have kicked the cable down there. Okay. Could be my electric personality. Uh, let's go, I, back. I let's go back to the other side. Yeah, I, I think uh -huh. I touched that piece down there on the floor, though, with my foot. Oh. You know, I don't yeah. want to go broken. I bet it was my uh, No, no you're okay. Here. Okay. okay. Yeah. You're, you're on different channels. I okay. think I kicked the piece down there to, uh, with my foot. I'm losing my windscreen. Wait, I shouldn't have a problem with the windscreen because I'm full hot air, right? It just goes, <laughs> goes high. Are you still getting static? No. no, no. Okay. It's yeah, it was that piece. I think I kicked it. Okay. So, yeah. Make sure Can you hear me? Am I good? Yeah, you're good. I don't hear any staff. You're good. Yeah. yeah, ACC is such a disappointment. You know, here they have such a great opportunity to do well, to be the leaders in preventing bites, to teach classes, to take a lot of the different trainers and bring them under one umbrella. You know, there's a lot for every trainer to learn from other trainers. I, I'm sure of it. Um, but they don't do that. It's divide and conquer, right? Kind of attitude with them. You know, it's divide and conquer. I think they it is. Yeah, conquer. they want to. They divide all the trainers. They and they try to conquer it all. When you think about it, they don't bring anybody together. They really separate and, and break down as many people as they can. I they, think that's true for both agencies. Right. It's just it's, they, they pick they, favorites and right. picking favorites has very little to do with the health and well-being of the creatures that they're supposed to be responsible for. Um, they're just, it's their major disappointment to me. And, and more importantly, I don't trust them. I don't trust them. When you get up there and lie and te intentionally say false, take false accusations against us to damage my business as an organization by the city, that's baffling to me. You would think the city would step up and get her out of here because the damage she's doing and the lawsuits that are going to prevail, you'll see, because I'm about to put smack down on them. It's just going to take one time for the wrong them to say something to the right person, and and I'll get them. You know, it's it's ridiculous. Well, you know, and there's this mis you know, there's this mis piece of information too that you know the SPC likes to say that there are no kill shelter. Well, they just pass dogs out the back door to the ACC. Right. And the ACC does the dirty work for them. Yeah, um, the ACC. I can't tell you how many dogs they'll turn loose that have been vicious, deemed vicious. They'll turn loose and rehome it, but they don't let. People like myself train that dog, which I've got the best results in the Bay Area for fixing aggressive dogs, but they won't let them come to me. But yet they'll turn that vicious, dangerous dog back out to the wrong people because they don't go out and check it. If they get to put another notch on their belt, there's another dog saved, right? Which is, is you're not saving the dog. You're just a boarding house for the trainers that are actually out there doing the legwork that are saving the dogs by rehabilitating them. They're just, they're a joke. San Francisco ACC is a complete joke. It's, could, uh, as one last thing, can I just get you guys to say your names on camera? I forgot to do this at the very beginning. Uh, <laughs> and give the date. What, you give the date? It's it's what is the date? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's, yeah. uh, Natasha Coral, uh, February 19th, 2019. Uh, Co-owner, wife, business partner, to him. Dan Parada. What did it say? say? Febru we just said February 19th. <laughs> Dude, my name is Dan Parada, February 19th, 2019. <laughs> and I, I'm the other co-owner. <laughs> and you have both been absolutely terrific, absolutely engaging, and uh, you were fun to listen to. I mean, it was informative. I feel like I learned a lot, and I thought I knew a lot about you guys already, uh, especially your dog training, because I didn't really know where you were coming from exactly in terms of dog training. We actually joke a lot here that we don't really train dogs. We train, we train humans, yeah. and, we, and we pattern a dog's behavior. It takes about 30 days for that predator to pattern something. So we start to change the pattern and teach you how to communicate to it non-verbally, what it expects from you, what you expect from it, and how to get that across, right? Without pain. Or you cookies. don't need pain. You don't need or cookies. Did, in terms of this business, is there an up and down uh, with some cycle besides the rusty bucket? Uh, I mean, is there like, you know, like is in good times do you have more clients? And, uh, so yeah, um, it's, it's funny. We just, we just went through a process um, of getting a little bit of funding for this big training project that we're doing and the bankers came back to me and said we want to give you all this money but we noticed that you have these dips 
in February and in um, September. And I said, please tell your board that those are not dips. That's a damn break. Yeah. And we are deeply grateful for them. So we get, um, so our boarding and daycare is only open to clients that have been through our training programs, either actively in or have graduated from, because we're the only training based boarding and daycare program in the Bay Area that I know of. So all of our daycare and boarding follows the same protocols as our training. Yeah, there's no dogs. There's, you won't ever see a group of dogs unattended and they're all our friendlies. There's always going to be a trainer working with one them. of the dogs around it with those. Right. So we don't do the 40 dogs that are run with a board teenager. Fire and biscuits at It's them. three to five dogs max with a trainer that's, you know, or a handler that knows what they're doing. So because of that, during high seasons, in addition to all of our training clients, high summer, winter holidays, we have all of our boarding clients that come in and um, increase the capacity by almost double most of the year. Uh, and then we get a little bit of, you know, winter's over, people get their Christmas bills and go, okay, I'm not going on a trip in February. And then in September, right at the end of summer break, the same thing, kids are going back to school, life's changes, they don't need as much boarding again. And we have, but those, our breaks are getting shorter and shorter. When we first opened, they lasted about six weeks and, it, you know, it was deep clean time and repair time. And, you know, now we're all, we're constantly building the airplane while flying it. And we look forward to, so it's, you know, we tell the staff, it's, you know, we, we have a lot of the kids that have worked, not all kids, but a lot of folks have worked for us for a really long time. And, you know, we get through crazy season and they can't wait for a second, right? They're getting double time hours and overtime hours. And then they're bored for a minute. And where's all our hours? Just enjoy this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> go see your mother. <laughs> yeah, go do something. Get away. Well, um, congratulations on a fantastic business. Thank I mean, you. I'm glad that uh, uh, you seem like such decent people. I'm happy you have a successful business. Yeah. Thank you. We're, so we're, we're going to continue until thank keep you. ACC out of my face. We're, we're proud of it. Um, it. You guys should take it, Dan. You should walk them through the building.